Mongolia, a country known for its nomadic lifestyle, its wide open landscapes and its raw natural beauty. With its abundance of flowing rivers and empty trails, and the ability to set up camp anywhere you desire, make it a bike tourer's paradise. somewhere we'd been looking forward to visiting for a very long time. We came here with a thirst for adventure, and it's safe to say we left feeling fulfilled. Welcome to Cycling Mongolia. Arriving in Ulaanbaatar, we caught the overnight train north to Mongolia's third biggest city, Erdenet, where we'd try to pick up a few last minute supplies before hitting the road. This is our first day riding here in Mongolia, just ridden out of Erdenet, and there's a few clouds in the sky, a bit worried we might cop some rain, but already this country is just unbelievably beautiful. We quickly met some bad weather when we got on the road, but just as quickly met some Mongolian hospitality with this family inviting us to take shelter from the rain in their gear, where they cooked us fresh meat filled pastries known as Horshord and gave us warm milk and vodka before seeing us on our way. So we've just found our first Ubu or Obo. And now we're circling it three times clockwise as is tradition for good luck on our travels. Our first couple days were spent on paved roads before we hit the wild Mongolian trails we were most looking forward to. But that didn't mean any shortage of stunning landscapes to camp in. From the internet, our route would take us west to Bulgan, before heading south through the magnificent Orkhon Valley, eventually leading to Tetsile, with little to no information on any of the towns that lay between. Just in the town of Bulgan now, where we stayed in this little hostel last night. Got a night's rest because Laura got stung by a wasp and had a pretty bad reaction to it and her leg blew up. So we're gonna see how the leg goes and um, maybe stay another day if she's not feeling any better. Not much to do in this little town, but good place to get some rest before getting on the road again. With Laura's leg not getting any better, we decided it's safest to go to the local hospital to get it checked out. But through some Google translating, we were given the all clear to get back out on the road. With only a few more paved kilometres to go, we quickly found another beautiful place to set up camp, filtered some water and dreamt of what lay ahead. Once we turned off the asphalt, we said goodbye to sealed roads and any semblance of easy navigation for the next few weeks, now relying on some basic plotted GPS routes and topographic maps and the odd bit of help from locals. We quickly learned that most maps were next to useless here. With wrong place names and roads changing course season to season, we learned to use our intuition and just let the landscape be our guide.
just came in real quick, so we just threw up the shelter, cooked some noodles, and hopefully it passes soon. With the freedom to camp almost anywhere we pleased, we were never far from our next stunning camp spot, often surrounded by animals and always in awe of Mongolia's beauty. Windy today, big headwind, hilly as always. Once we get to this next pass in a few kilometres, should have about a 15k downhill where we get to a little town where we can resupply for the first time in a few days, charge batteries and stuff like that before setting off again. Headwind is just hectic, just whipping through this valley, straight into our faces as Laura's pushing uphill back there. Yeah, big windy day. That's where we're headed, down in the valley there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Just riding around this little town now, looking for somewhere to maybe stay the night, or somewhere to have a shower. They both seem to be different places, like there's some central shower house. Uh, also just looking for somewhere to eat and charge our batteries. Seems like we've got to go somewhere different for each different thing we need. So we found a little hotel for the night, and they cooked us up a delicious meal of Mongolian beef. No running water or electricity, but it'll do. No running water in towns meant that toilets were outhouses like this one, and basic facilities meant basic door locks too. We got our resupply done at the local market of mainly chocolate, pasta, noodles and tinned beef, and we were ready for another few days in the tent. We're a few k's out of the town we stayed in last night now, just on our way uh, towards Tetzeleg. Got a pretty broken up night's sleep with some guys trying to break into where we were staying. Sounded like they were gonna break down the door at one stage. Pretty sure they were after more booze. Sounded like they were pretty drunk. Uh, but we got our resupply done. Got all our batteries charged up and ready for four more days out on the road. The small towns in Mongolia felt like the old wild west interesting in their own way, but not somewhere we felt we'd want to spend more than one night at a time. We were happy to get back out into the beautiful open countryside, with the wandering herds, the occasional farmer, and the more than occasional flying bugs. This is how you snack when there's a million bugs trying to get to you. But all the bugs in the world couldn't take away from this remarkable landscape felt like a dream to ride through. Just finished up making our dinner for the night. We've got a little camp spot here, right by the river. And we've been joined by all these sheep behind us. Don't know if you can hear them. And all these horses too have come for a swim. Wash up at the end of the day.
When we woke the next morning, we were approached by Sanka, a local farmer who invited us to join him and his family for tea and breakfast. Inside their beautiful home, they prepared a feast of fresh breads and cheeses and clotted cream made from their own animal's produce. Even though the language barrier limited our conversation, their kindness to us filled our hearts as well as our bellies, and it's mornings like this that we'll remember forever. This is a typical little camp spot that we've had the last few days, trying to be by the river so that we've got access for washing ourselves and for pots and pans after dinner, but a little bit elevated so it's not boggy and covered in mosquitoes and always heaps of animals around, whether it's goats and sheep or horses or cows, we've always got company. Being by the river was also great for trying unsuccessfully to catch fish and filtering the many litres of water we needed each day. So this little town marks the end of the gravel roads before Tetzeleg. We're only about 25k away there from there now, but we're gonna stop just out of town and enjoy one more nice night's camping before we get there. And then once we get there, we'll figure out another route to take us for the next week or two. Even though this campsite was close to town, it was a great place to not catch fish, have a campfire, and get another sleep under the stars before we got to the big city of Tetzeleg. Just one final gravel hill for us this morning. This is the main road, which was sealed for a little bit. But now, as you can see, full of dust, Plenty of cars, so about 5k up, 5k down before we get to Tetzelag. The weather's taken a turn for the worse. It's cold and rainy today. Good day to be in town, not out on the bikes. Then go find somewhere to have a warm meal and a cup of tea. We found our way to the Fairfield Guest House, which is a local hub for people looking to plan adventures in the surrounding area. We've had a good few days off here in Tetzeleg now. We started out with no power in the town, so slow start. But we got power back, we got everything charged up, got all of our food bought for the next five, six days until we get to the next town. We got our route sorted with some help from Murray from Fairfield Guest House. Now we're gonna head south through the mountains down towards the Gobi and we're looking forward to getting back out there. The second section of our trip would take us east out of Tetzeleg, skirting the Kangi Mountains towards Karakurum and the Mini Gobi. This is our first night's campsite since setting off from Tetzeleg. We chose this direction to come because of the change of landscape. We've got much more trees through all the valleys here. And yeah, our first night we found a perfect little spot, a little clearing in behind the trees to set up camp. Really cold night. I think we're in for a few more. The reason we chose this route out of Tetzeleg was to get a 
different landscape. And as you can see, just riding through these tree line trails, got what we're looking for straight away. It's absolutely beautiful here. We never saw any locals riding bicycles on the trails. We saw plenty of them riding horses, something that's been ingrained in the Mongolian way of life for centuries. They ride so naturally and with such effortless flow, it was often mesmerizing to watch. With the weather turning on us, we once again seek shelter in a local gear, and once again, without questioning why we were riding bikes in the rain through their country, we're given fresh, warm milk and somewhere to dry off by the fire. Uh-oh, I think that storm's headed this way. Not ideal. Second storm got us. We just got smashed by two big rainstorms as we're coming up this hill. First time we tried to get the tent out so we could get up in the outer of it. That didn't work, so we ended up sheltering underneath the outer. And then the second one, we just managed to get the tarp out and take cover under that. It's not ideal. We'd chosen to come to Mongolia in August, as it's the middle of summer here, with temperatures generally in the mid-twenties. But even at this time of year, we still experienced nights down to almost zero, and had some very cold starts to our days. I can't imagine it here through the winter, when temperatures in these valleys get as low as minus 40. Just came to this little building in the centre of town, which all the little towns have. It's the local shower place where you come when you want to have a shower. This is our accommodation here in Batotsi, simple little motel. We don't have running water in these towns, so this is the bathroom. So we've just left Batotsi on the way towards Karakum. The roads are either side of the main towns are usually pretty horrible due to the higher amount of traffic. This one's no exception. But hopefully soon we get back onto some nice smooth dirt roads and find a place to set up camp for the night. It's Batutsi back there in the distance. As you can see a few cars making their way out of town. Just on the outskirts now, getting back into the farms. Just got our little campsite for the night, awesome spot by the river. Just hoping these clouds don't absolutely dump it down on us.
everywhere you are in Mongolia, there's always animals around. They just sort of roam freely because there's no fences anywhere. You've got these cows and yaks and crosses between cows and yaks just coming down to the water right where we're camping, have a little drink. So cool. Our ride through this section of our trip was coming to an end in a spectacular fashion, with some of the most beautiful landscapes we'd ridden through as we made our way towards the end of the Orkhon Valley and to the ancient city of Karakoram. Founded by Genghis Khan in the 13th century, this city was once the capital of the Mongol Empire and the centre of world trade and politics. Coming up now to a little park called the Mini Gobi, which is basically just a big area of sand that's blown in from the actual Gobi, making its own little mini desert. Thought it'd be a really cool area to check out as it's so different to all the mountains and greenery that we've been in. And we can just see it now. It sort of reminds us of Oman. It really is just a, a mini desert. Let's have a look. The Mini Gobi was a little underwhelming and a little bit of a tourist trap, but worth checking out if your route happens to pass through this area. With our time in Mongolia now coming to an end, it felt as if the past month had been a dream. Many places we travel, it's the people that make it special. But I think here it's the lack of people, the exposure to true remoteness in an absolutely breathtaking landscape that make traveling here feel like a true adventure. As people who love riding bikes and exploring the outdoors, there's no better place on earth and we can't wait to come back again and again. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to follow us on more adventures, please subscribe to this channel and find us on Instagram at We Ride Bikes Places.